this is Todd from TT Bike Fit, and today we're going to be looking at uh, first in my series of uh, analyses on the riding positions of the uh, top pros in Kona this year. And we're going to be looking at um, you know a few select fit variables. Certainly there are there are many more, maybe than we're going to talk about here, but uh, we're going to look at some of the key ones um, that you know that we're able to observe and, and measure here with angles. Um, and certainly um, none of the comments here are meant to be criticisms of uh, any of the riders or, or their coaches or anything else. Um, and certainly we're only you know, able to look at a window in time here. Uh, this is not a fit studio. This is how they're actually riding when they pass me on the Queen K. And certainly doesn't necessarily reflect um, the position they're always in. Um, but on the other hand, I think it is... Uh, is quite instructive to, to look at some of these key features. So if we start with uh, Marino Van Honecker here, uh, first cyclist pass at this point, you know, this is around mile 110, 109 on the, on the bike course coming back. Uh, when he came back um, well in the lead, there really wasn't much in the way of wind yet. It had really only barely started to pick up. So as we go later in these riders, um, they're going to be fighting more and more wind because it was really in the process of of picking up. So uh, from an aero standpoint, uh, Marino looks fantastic. I mean, one of the things you can see about his position is that his body almost forms an airfoil shape. So not only is he very flat, very horizontal uh, from a torso position, the front of his torso is essentially you know, dead level, assuming his bike here is tilted down about one degree relative to the camera. Um, so he's minimizing frontal area that way. The um, wind is effectively not seeing any of the front of his body at all. Um, his also his, his shape, he basically forms uh, nearly an airfoil here, so um, you know his CD is going to be relatively low as well. So you know excellent from an aero standpoint. Let's look at his um, approximate effective seat angle. So what we're doing here is looking at the approximate location of the uh, ischial tuberosities, sit bones, uh, where is the rider actually sitting? Um, bike tilted down one, so he's at about 79 if we subtract that one. That's very typical. Uh, you can see that he is up a little bit on the saddle. Uh, so his saddle is positioned a little rearward of that. And we're going to see that to varying degrees on a lot of these riders. That you know the saddle might be positioned more like 78 or even 77 or 76, but the rider is sitting much steeper than that. So definitely one feature in common we're going to see is, is that all of these guys are sitting quite steep at this point. So one of the other key factors I want to look at is it involves hip angle, the, uh, the power the rider can generate. Uh, and one of the ways we look at that is to look at the angle of the thigh at the top of the pedal stroke here. And we're going to look at that on all these riders. And you can see that Marino is a we subtract that one degree, he's about at 23. So that's that's fine. Uh, it's on the, if anything, on slightly on the lower end of what we like to see. Um, but it's still acceptable. It does give him, with this very flat torso position, it does give him a fairly tight angle here. Um, but certainly uh, he seems to be able to handle, to handle it. Now that said, he you know, didn't have the best run. Uh, may have had absolutely nothing to do with his with his bike position at all, but um, you know always something to take in consideration. Uh, you can be super aero and super fast on the bike, but obviously you've got to be able to run off of that position as well. And this is going to be an individual thing for every athlete. Um, as we go forward on him, um, one thing we can see that that um, from a saddle height perspective, uh, Marino's definitely at the low end of the spectrum here. Uh, we have a number of ways we look at this, but we're going to stick to um, looking at basically knee angle down the center of the leg here. And so, you know, we would put them right around right around 140, high 130s here. And um, along with that, foot angle here is pretty typical, low 20s. So this definitely puts him on the low end of the saddle spectrum. Uh, part of you know, part of that's probably due to the fact that that um, 
his saddle height was set up with him sitting further back on the saddle, which would have given him a straighter leg at the bottom of the pedal stroke. Um, but certainly as he's a bit forward on the saddle here, he's um, looking relatively, relatively low. One other thing we uh, look at is saddle is um, pelvic tilt and uh, the essentially what we call the takeoff angle of the spine and how that basically affects the overall rider position. See that uh, Marino's uh, low 50 degree here, so that's a fairly upright pelvis. He's sitting with the pelvis essentially tilted back, not tilted forward. Hence, that's why we see this um, very consistent rounding of the back here. Uh, and, you know, he has the ability to, even with that upright pelvis, to get nice and flat in the front. A lot of people talk about flat backs. We talk about flat fronts. And uh, he's that ability to get nice and flat in the front because he has a decent amount of spinal flexibility. So even though his spinal takeoff angle is quite steep, uh, you can see immediately he gets, gets flexion in the spine and uh, that allows him to get a very flat position and not have um, you know, a terrible hump in the back, just a, a smooth rounding and to uh, look very good and narrow. Now other folks who end up sitting with this upright pelvis won't look nearly as good in the arrow position uh, because they don't have this, this range of spinal flexibility that, that Marino does. Um, so pelvic tilt question, although this, this can be affected by the way the bike is set up, typically it has to do with the rider's individual biomechanics and it's something that's not uh, easily changed, so you're kind of stuck with it. Now Pete Jacobs unfortunately was riding out toward the middle of the road, so he was a good bit further away from us, and so I had to blow the video up here to get, uh, to get in tight on him but um, we can definitely see a few things here even so. In this case um, he's angled up relative to the camera so we'll take that into account. So about two degrees angled up. So first let's look at that effective seat angle. So you can see that Pete is actually riding at this point quite steeply, probably about 83, 84 degrees uh, as, measured, as measured on the sit bones, maybe 83 um, degrees. So he's definitely up, uh, up very forward. Uh, you can see that he is a bit forward on the saddle here. And um, one thing we can look at is if I angle the top of the pedal stroke, that is, uh, that is good and open. So part of the reason he's achieving that is because he's so far forward on the saddle. Uh, it's 26 plus is two or three degrees tilted up, so he's he's high 20s. So um, that means he's relatively open here. Still manages to get a fairly fairly flat torso angle. He's not as flat as a merino. Um, he's probably now remember he's tilted up here a couple of degrees, so he's probably high to mid single digits as far as the front of the torso is concerned. I'm still a decent position, not quite as super aggressive. Um, pelvic tilt as well, we can see that he is a, a um, fairly upright sitter, untilted uh, pelvis, uh, sitting back essentially on his sit bones. and. Um, basically uses a fair amount of spinal flexion there to achieve this flat position. So we also get the rounded back. Uh, it certainly doesn't look quite as quite as arrow or low as Marino, but still uh, quite positioned. Obviously worked, worked very well for him uh, running off the bike. Try to get an observation of his relative saddle height here. And here he is going to be a little bit behind us, so that's not going to be a perfect a perfect measurement because we're looking back at him here, but uh, we'll try to take one anyway. And this actually, if taking that frontward an front angle into account from the camera, this is a very um, middle of the range saddle height. So this is, um, you know, very typical or average saddle height that we're going to see. Um, it's a little bit a little bit high on the uh, 
on the foot angle, uses a pretty steep foot angle. So if anything, the combination of those two points towards a higher saddle overall. Um, we can see you know, his leg on the other side. We can get that same kind of observation here. We can't see exactly where, where we should be drawing these lines, but we're going to get a, a similar angle. And it's definitely going to be in the mid to high end of the spectrum, especially combined with that steep foot angle. So as opposed to Marino, uh, we would put who is really on the low end or outside the low end of the, the knee angle saddle height spectrum, we would put Pete on the high end. An interesting point to make, we mentioned that he's sitting very steeply here, um, low 80s to mid 80s, so quite steep. You see that his saddle lever is positioned probably more around a 77 degree angle, so even a little bit on the slack side, so it's got him way up on the nose. And it's interesting because, as opposed to some of the other riders we'll look at, even in this forward position, he's got a, a relatively high um, saddle height. In other words, his, his uh, knee angle is relatively straight. So when he's sitting back here, if he ever does, he's going to be quite high on the saddle. Uh, and um, so that's, that's an interesting interesting position. What we'll see with a lot of these guys is that that looks like their saddle is set with them sitting back on it and therefore they end up quite low when they're up on the nose here in the arrow position. Dirk Bockel, we have an extreme example here of a upright pelvis position. Um, bike's tilted up but uh, he's sitting um, pelvis rolled back 63 degrees or so and so what we see from that is a lot of spinal flexion to get him down into this position. Saddle height. You can see he's got a fairly steep foot angle. Saddle height, we're going to want to look at it right here. Looks high as well. Definitely when combined with combined with that foot angle on the higher end of the spectrum. Um, similar to Pete Jacobs, here we're going to see foot angle at the bottom in the 30s. That's definitely steep. Um, so if anything, you know he's definitely positioned with a with a relatively high saddle here. And as we as he rides past here, we get a good view of that amount of spinal flexion that he's using. Um, Reach-wise, I haven't pointed it out yet, but you'll see most of these guys, because they are nearly horizontal torso angle, in most cases that um, they're using um, very short reaches from the standpoint that vertical upper arms, mostly horizontal forearms. So this is a clear example of a 90-90 of a setup here on the front. And a, Actually, from an arrow standpoint, probably pretty reasonable, considering that you know he's he's not a not a tilter on the pelvis, so um, needs a lot of spinal flexion to get here, but uh, ends up probably in a pretty arrow position, head um, relative to the uh, high point in the back, uh, pretty pretty low. Um, the wind is going to see necessarily see some of the front of his uh, torso here, but. Again, considering the pelvic position, probably um, probably about as good as he's going to do uh, from a wind tunnel standpoint. Now, we can also, one thing we haven't looked at is his effective seat angle. Let's take that two again. So he's tilted up on the bike about two degrees. So we're going to put him around 82. So once again, quite a steep seat angle. So the last rider we're going to look at in this video is Sebastian Keenley, who might have had the fastest bike split barring the uh, flat tire. He's certainly one of the faster cyclists out there. And uh, I think, you know, when you look at his position on the bike, uh, you know, he immediately looks extremely aero um, to even uh, uneducated eye. And, uh, so he's got, you know, one of the more aggressive and, you know, beautifully arrow positions. So
we're going to roll them forward to this spot right here just so we can get a get a shot of the thigh angle let's get it level on his bike So the bike here is tilted down about a degree. So that puts him probably right around 81, 82. So once again, steeper than 80. Look at the thigh angle up here. Fairly open. He's got that 28 degree, uh, which, is, which is good. Uh, 27 minus the 1 degree. You know, that helps to allow him to get this torso so flat, uh, whether we measure in the middle or measure uh, down the front, he's pretty much dead level as far as that's concerned, uh, minimizing his frontal area. The wind's not going to see any of the front of his torso. He is more of a, a tilter on the pelvis, so he's got his pelvis rolled forward more, probably you know, roughly in the 40 to high 30 degree range. If you look at where his where his waistband is, it's probably more like that as opposed to being more upright. So what that results in is a shallower spinal takeoff angle, as I call it here, and a relatively flat uh, spine, less curvature needed in the spine to obtain this extremely flat position. You know, his head is blended in very nice with uh, with his torso here, very little of it um, up above the high point in his back. Uh, he's a little got a little more extended reach, at least where he's sitting at this point, than um, some of the other guys. He's got just a little bit of uh, elbow position out in front of his shoulders, a little bit of height on the hands relative to um, to the elbows. He is up a bit forward on the on the saddle versus where it's position and the you know last thing we might want to look at with him his um, seat height and uh, he's riding away from us here so this is actually going to make it look make his uh, knee angle look straighter than it really is but I think he's going to measure um, pretty close to the middle of the range we use um, moderately high now this like I said this is going to come out higher than than it would otherwise so it's going to show here 150s it's really not that straight and what we can do is try to look at the leg on the other side here that would certainly put him up on the high end of the spectrum we can try to see what the angle is going to come out here on the other side this is going to be far from perfect but we can see that it's going to come out closer to mid 140s more of a typical middle of the range um, but if anything if I had to put them on you know low versus high I did again put them on the the higher end of the spectrum so what we can uh, see from these guys these uh, first four guys here is um, all are sitting steep 80 plus degrees pretty much Marino might be the exception at 79 um, other than Marino most of them appear to be on the somewhat higher end of the uh, of the saddle height spectrum uh, when and arrow wise all are uh, looking quite good now we've got some we're gonna have a couple more parts to this analysis we're gonna look at some of the other riders and we'll see that that as we go down the list here that um, some of these things uh, change especially some of the saddle heights and, and the arrow positioning so stay tuned for, for the uh, future videos in the series